Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Bill White. I'm the Mayor Pro Tem of the Village of Downers Grove. Our Mayor Martin Tully is traveling on business, so I will be presiding over the meeting this evening. Uh, before we go any further, it's been our custom to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I invite everyone to stand. Right over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to ask our village clerk to call the roll. Commissioner Wallace. Commissioner Earl. Commissioner Waldaf. Here. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Jose. Here. Commissioner Barnett. Here. Mayor Tully. Okay, we do have a quorum. We're missing three members, but, but four is sufficient to proceed with business. Um, so at, at that, I'll move on to the, to the next item. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from our last council meeting? So moved. Second. Uh, any members of the council have comments, suggestions, cor corrections about the minutes? Um, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 No one's opposed. The meetings are approved unanimously. Now we come to item four, which is public comment. And this is one of a couple of minutes, maybe there may have been many opportunities this evening. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to address the village council on matters of concern that are not on the agenda. So if anybody has comments they wish to make about items that are not on the agenda, now's the time to come to the podium, state your name and address, and tell us what you have to say. Good evening, Mr. White. My name is Richard McLaren. I am the commander of your American Legion Post 80. And I have five slides for you, and then I'm going to give you a status uh, state, of the, state of the post this year, uh, just as I did last year. Um, slide one. For anybody that doesn't want know where our post is, cross uh, the middle of the screen, Ogden Avenue, and you can see the Walgreens there and the Jewel there, and they turn north on Saratoga and up there to that park, and that's where the uh, post building is. Next slide. That's us. 11,000 square feet of, uh, of building de devoted to uh, this community. Next slide, please. Here's a picture of one of the disabled veterans we take to lunch every uh, month. Uh, and you can just barely see one of our veterans in, in behind him getting the next vet ready to come down on the uh, elevator. Next slide. This is a picture of wreaths across America uh, down at Abraham Lincoln uh, National Cemetery. I took a team of about 30 guys down there. Uh, the day before this picture was taken, actually, uh, there was no snow. It was a nice day, and we put uh, wreaths on um, uh, about 100 of our past veterans' graves. Next slide, please. And this is a picture of our main hall, uh, and, and you see a picture of bingo going on right now. Um, right now, this very minute, we have about 100 people playing bingo in our main hall every Tuesday night. It's our, our main source of revenue. Um, a distant second is uh, donations. Uh, that is the same room where the traffic court sits five days a week, the, uh, the uh, DuPage County Traffic Court. Uh, up there at the end is where the judge's bench is. Uh, it's pushed back for purposes of bingo. And the last slide. Uh, this is a summary of what I'm about to tell you in the next five or ten minutes. Um, very quick summary. We donate every year $27,000 or so for scholarships and other purposes to this community. Uh, we help any needy veteran, whether he is a member of the Legion or not. One of my main purposes tonight is to let you guys know that we are here, and if you ever hear of a needy veteran, we want to know about it, because we will help. And of course, we've run the Memorial Day Parade for Downers Grove for 99 years. This will be 99. And we provide an honor guard uh, for uh, funerals for any veteran. Uh, if you know of a, of a deceased veteran uh, who would like to have an honor guard either uh, inside or outside, uh, we'll have uh, guys there. Um, outside, real guns. Inside, not so much. Okay. <laughs> That's it for the slides. Thanks. So. Um, who are we? We're 300 uh, war veterans, um, members of the American Legion. 
um, we, our uh, membership was as high as 400 you know back 25 years ago uh, we're holding steady at about 300 now so um, I, I, I'm pleased to say that, that we're, we're, we're holding even we are also the um, ladies auxiliary which you see doing poppy day um, uh, and um, legion riders the guys on the motorcycles uh, doctors lawyers Indian chiefs and and everybody else on motorcycles uh, uh, escorting um, usually funerals but sometimes other things and um, I guess uh, one of the highlights that I wanted to mention early on in my little uh, State of the Union uh, speech, State of the Post, um, Congress awarded commendations, congressional commendations to two of our guys uh, this um, spring, um, Emery Wolf and Bruno Maestri, both World War II veterans. Bruno is 100, Emery is 96, I think. And Congressman Roscom came to the post and presented them personally. Uh, so we're pretty proud of that. Those guys have been serving other veterans uh, through our post for 40 plus years, each of them. Um, so I told you where we are. We're on Saratoga Avenue up there, just past the Jewel. Um, and so what do we do besides give away $27,000? Uh, we sponsor Boy Scout Troop 80. Um, we have 33 scouts right now, and over the course of the last 30 or 40 years, we have graduated 124 Eagle Scouts. Uh, we sponsor Cub Scout Pack 80, and these guys meet in our uh, post uh, in the evenings um, when bingo is not going on. Uh, we sponsor. Um, we do not sponsor an American League, um, uh, American uh, Legion uh, baseball team. We sponsor eight of them. Um, the, we, we also, of course, as you saw, um, make visits to the hospitalized vets uh, and uh, get them out of the, uh, the nursing homes and to uh, a monthly breakfast. Um, uh, and we, we, we put them alternate with one of our guys uh, all the way around the table. So we usually have about you know, 15 to 20 people at the table. Um, and they really appreciate getting out and the conversation. Um, we do uh, a, a thing called Boys State where we send three or four juniors in high school uh, to um, a, a really an away camp um, that teaches them civics over a two week period. They elect a mayor and a village council and a county commission, et cetera, and they learn all about uh, the American system of democracy and also have a lot of fun um, and we pay for that. That's free. Um, we send the same number, three or four guys, to a thing called Police Academy, where they learn police and, and um, uh, safety uh, things. Again, it's, like, it's a fun away camp with an emphasis on um, the police. Um, we also run a thing called Toys for Tots, uh, and we donate the wreaths across America. I, sh I showed you the pictures. Um, and, um, of course, we open our hall to a lot of activities. Um, rentals, when it's a, a wedding or some such, an anniversary, um, but, but free when it's the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, or, um, you know, the Cub Scouts, or, or whatever. Um, I told you we give away about $27,000 every year. Um, we're pretty proud of that. We did the same last year. Um, Several thousand dollars of that goes to high school kids going on to college. New this year, we gave a thousand dollars matched by our auxiliary uh, of another thousand to the veteran um, coordinator at uh, College of DuPage. It turns out that the guys that are going there on the GI Bill can afford the tuition, but they can't take certain of the courses because the course manual is too expensive, $250 sometimes. So we gave them uh, a couple thousand dollars and uh, they use that to buy books for the vets and the vets then return them at the end of the semester and they go to the next step taking that course until the professor changes the, the manual. So that's a new one this year. Um, we donate to the uh, Midwest Shelter for Homeless Vets 
uh, over here in Wheaton. There's very successful operations being imitated uh, across the country. Um, they run it very much like boot camp. I don't know if you guys have read about it, but uh, they're up at six and uh, working on getting resumes out or, or something by 7.30 or 8. Um, we donated to the honor flights. We, we flew several of our guys, World War II and now Korean guys, to Washington. Um, and of course, we, we, uh, we donate to um, operations, support our troops. Um, I mentioned the honor guards for the funerals. Um, we do honor guard for um, Veterans Day services. Um, and on Memorial Day, uh, we send our honor guard to uh, all five cemeteries here in Downers Grove, um, 21 gun salute, um, just prior to the parade that we run every year that you guys know about. Um, we also conduct um, a Veterans Day service separately uh, at, at the post, um, usually outside, but this past uh, fall, it was uh, very cold, so we <laughs> moved it inside. I think it was 10 degrees at the time. Um, and last but not least, uh, looking ahead, uh, we are the proud owners of a thing called the CAS flag, uh, which is a 150-year-old flag um, that was um, sewn by a member of the CAS family for which CAS Avenue is named. Um, we are going to donate it to the Darien Historical Society because that's where it came from originally. Um, but I thought you would be interested to know that it is it is really old. We've had it in the in the post for you know in safe for safekeeping for a very long time, and uh, it turns out that the um, Chicago Historical Society, I believe, is going to uh, restore it. Um, before it is uh, on Flag Day will be donated. Um, so, bingo. Tuesday nights, doors open at four o'clock. Send everyone you know. This is how we support ourselves. This is how we give away the uh, tuition, and it's great fun. We have about 100 people over there right now. Any questions? Any questions from my fellow? Questions, question. I do have a comment. Yes, comment. To add. I have an occasion to be in the, in the Legion Hall on Saratoga Avenue, and I'm fascinated by the memorabilia and the maps that are on the wall. Yeah. It's this, you can learn a lot of history and yeah. a lot of local people. So yeah, almost all of that has been donated uh, by, by members, uh, well, uh, many of whom have passed away, but I mean, we had guys land in Normandy, you know, um, uh, fight in Iwo Jima. I mean, and they, you know, as I said, Emory Wolf is uh, in his uh, advanced 90s. He's there every day, World War II veteran. Um, uh, went into France, I guess, about, well, several months after the Normandy invasion and uh, was stationed in France for many years. Um, so we've got a lot of memorabilia. If, you, if anybody ever wants to come around, um, uh, probably Tuesday night would not be a real good time to do that. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Thanks so much for coming. This is, you know, the, this American Legion Post is such an important part of the fabric of our community. Yes. And we very much appreciate you taking the time to come here. You're, you're being broadcast on our cable channel as part of our, this evening's must see. Well, now you tell me. Yes. <laughs> You've been on TV the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't tell too many lies. Thanks, thanks very much for your attention. Thank you again. If you know of a needy veteran, Send them to us. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I have um, 100 people at Bingo. May I be excused? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Anybody want to follow that? <laughs> My name is Jenny Garst. I live at 5230 for our court. And um, on December 5th, I'm sure you all remember that there was a special session after the regular meeting where you all 
talked about the um, and reviewed and also the new proposals for how to deal with stormwater, especially pertaining to new construction. Um, at the end of that special session, um, it seems like the um, it seemed like all of you um, came to a consensus that you were ready to move forward with a vote, especially concerning um, new construction. Um, and I haven't heard anything else. And I've been reading minutes. My understanding on that, unless something's changed very recently, is this is going to be perhaps the largest item on our agenda next Tuesday. That staff has finished, or at least finished enough of their work that they can make a truly substantial presentation of the work that they've done. And next Tuesday will be our first exposure to that. I haven't seen it yet, so I can't tell you what it'll, you know, and you, we'll, we'll, we'll see it during the upcoming week, but then we'll talk about it next Tuesday, and then we'll have the timeline for taking action. Um, that's, you know, I, it, they, they couldn't get it, it wasn't ready for this evening, it'll be ready next Tuesday for us to take the next step forward uh, on what happened after our meeting in December. Will the next step forward include a vote? Well, we, the, 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 there's a requirement of a first reading and then an action item. So we never, we, we can't vote on things the first time we, well, except in our occasions, the first time we see something. You know, the council hasn't seen the written materials yet. Um, how soon we vote will depend on how we react to the materials we haven't read yet. Will the first reading be at the next meeting? I don't, is, no. No. That's no. When will it be? That's up to the council after they see the materials. If we basically, because you know, we haven't seen the we haven't seen the staff and engineering report yet. I haven't seen it. None of the, none of my fellow c commissioners have seen it. After we and we'll see it and review it probably towards the end of the week. Friday we'll probably get get the materials and we'll look at them all over the weekend. You'll have access at the same time over the weekend, and we'll we will deliberate what we see and give feedback to staff, and based on our conversation next Tuesday, when hopefully all seven of us are here, we then will set a time a timeline uh, for first reading followed by action. I have to tell you that I'm concerned about the amount of time that has lapsed between December 5th and now. I'm also extremely concerned about how long it's going to take moving forward. <coughs> Can I ask why this two months has gone by and just now, maybe next week, we're going to see the next step? Um, our fellow staff can probably give a more detailed answer. My basic generic understanding is that the engineering is hard work and complicated. We also wanted to have a meeting where everybody was here, so. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. The mayor's traveling on business, he, he, you know, he, so he was unable to be here tonight. Is he planning on being here at the next meeting? I believe all seven are expected next week. Yeah, and, and I think, as, as we said before, I think Martelli may, 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 may said this to you, what you're doing this evening is the best way to keep all of us focused on, on, on these concerns. So I compliment you on being here because you're making it very clear how important this is to you, and that's the best possible way for us to move forward as fast as possible going forward. I have to tell you that I resent the fact that it takes me being here to make that happen. I trust that you all take your jobs very seriously here and that you all feel how concerned so many of us are, not just me. What I say is that there's many people with many issues and the people that come to us are the ones that, that, that that's how we understand which issues are most important to the, to the community. I think I've made it pretty clear that this is very important, not just to me, and I think others have too. And I have to tell you that it feels like it's taken for granted that we don't show up on a regular basis in large numbers. You know, I know you are all busy. I know you all have jobs. So are the rest of us. And I have two small children. I volunteer in many different areas. I'm tired. It's a lot for me to show up here. I wish I could show up every single Tuesday, but I can't. And I feel like it's taken, I, that's taken advantage of. That, 
the fact that I am not here every single Tuesday, that I'm not voicing my concern every single Tuesday, and that other people aren't either. Because frankly, I think a lot of people have given up. I think a lot of people are very self-conscious about coming up in front and speaking like this. And I don't appreciate that. I wish more people were here voicing their concern, but they're not. But I also don't think that that doesn't mean that it's an extensive concern of many people in this village. Well, I believe all of us are committed to moving forward on this project as fast as we can. I and don't believe that. Okay. And I would like to see more action. Okay, I think we're hearing In a faster your timeline, please. Okay, we're hearing your comment. And next week we'll be setting the timeline. Thank you. I will be here. Okay. I appreciate it. Anybody else in the audience have a public comment they wish to make on a general matter, not on this evening's agenda? Okay, the next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. The chair invites a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mayor White, I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, is, is there anybody in the audience that wishes to comment on any item on the consent agenda? Uh, council should not discuss it on the consent. Anybody want to remove an item? If not, we'll call the roll, please. Commissioner Wilder? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Mayor White? Aye. Uh, the, con the consent agenda passes unanimously. The next item on our agenda is our active agenda. We have no active agenda items. We then turn to the first reading. The traditional practice for the first reading is for members of the village staff to make a presentation regarding the item. Members of the council will ask questions if they have any of the people making the presentation and then we'll open it up to the public after that. So after the first reading, after the, the staff report and council has an initial chance to deliberate, anybody who wishes to speak on these items will have an opportunity. We'll mm -hmm. We will deliberate again. With first reading, no action can, can be taken that this is a determination for putting something on a future active agenda which we can take we, we, which we can take a vote and take formal action okay so we'll turn it over to manager fieldman who will get us going on the on the first reading thank you mayor white there are three items on tonight's first reading agenda basically two issues both issues will be presented by our community development director stan popovich good evening mayor council members uh, the first item is a request for a rezoning and a special use to permit a school addition at Lester School. We all know Lester is on the Lester's on the east side of town, uh, located here on Indianapolis and Lincoln, between Indianapolis and Lincoln, uh, just east of Fairview there. Uh, Uh, here's a, a shot of the campus itself. Uh, you can see that there's a school building, parking lot, and grass area. Uh, it's currently zoned R4, single family, residentially attached house four. Uh, the proposal is to rezone that to an IMP2 classification. Uh, in addition, there's a special use request to put a school addition on the east side of the building here, shown in purple. If we zoom in a little bit, the outline purple part is the new building. It's a three uh, classroom addition, which will accommodate all the uh, kindergarten classroom there. We're not anticipating this to uh, increase enrollment overall. You can also see in the sketch some uh, landscape improvements with the new entrance to the school and, and a ramp there as well. Uh, this is a, a rendering of the addition, looking at the, uh, new, the new entrance there and then from the other side here. Uh, as shown in our report, it does meet uh, the goals of the comprehensive plan, shown here on the um, screen and also in the manager's memo. And it does meet the rezoning criteria and special use criteria in the zoning ordinance. If there's any questions, I can answer those for you at this time. Any of my colleagues have any questions on this item? Okay. Move on, move on to the next item. Okay. The next item is a special use at 2410 Ogden Avenue. This is on the west side of Ogden Avenue between Cross and Finley Road. Uh, the property again is outlined here in blue. We zoom in a little bit. It's a former restaurant site that's currently vacant. You can see it has two curb cuts on the Ogden Avenue. 
petitioners are proposing to uh, demolish the existing building and build a new building outlined here in purple and colored in purple. You can see they've removed one curb cut and they will be improving the existing curb cut there uh, for full access onto Ogden Avenue. There's location for a future sidewalk. A uh, big thing with car dealers is to make sure that the car carrier can trans, trans, uh, transportate and go around the whole building there and they can to drop off cars. Uh, this also provides access for the um, fire trucks as well if need be. And you can see a lot of green space here uh, and additional parking areas for the uh, display vehicles as well. Here's a rendering of the building, so principally glass and metal panel off along the front there. Uh, on the lower right is the L, uh, a rendering of the rear of the building with some surface bays in the back. It's principally a metal panel building uh, with some different elevations here that would be very attractive on Ogden Avenue. Uh, comprehensive plan calls for it to be corridor commercial. Uh, if this is re regional and local customers. It meets the uh, comprehensive plan goals, and then it does meet the criteria for special use. If there any questions, I can answer those for you at this time as well. Okay. Any of my colleagues have any questions or concerns about the, about this proposal? Well, I guess I forgot to ask. If anybody has comments or questions, really about either one, because I didn't ask the public on, on on the prior. Any members of the public have any comments or questions regarding I, any of the first reading items that were discussed this evening? I guess not. I believe that concludes our first reading. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Come to the mayor's report. And embarrassingly, I have no report. <laughs> so move to the manager's report. Uh, just a point of personal privilege, just a warm welcome to a special guest, an eighth grader here tonight with us, Alex, who is a phenomenal drummer and piano player. I enjoy watching him do his music. I think he might be here as part of a scout project. So. Welcome to one of our young residents, Alex. That ends my report. Thanks. Okay. Is this indeed a scout project? Okay. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Um, attorney's report. Thank you, Mayor. Three items to present this evening. The first is an ordinance rezoning certain property located at 236 Indianapolis Avenue. An ordinance authorizing a special use for 236 Indianapolis Avenue to permit a school addition. And an ordinance authorizing a special use for 2410 Ogden Avenue to permit an automobile dealership. All three items will be on next week's active agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we go to individual council member reports. This is an opportunity for each member of the council to make a presentation of matters of interest to them or items of interest um, pertaining to the village or matters in which they are li liaisons. Uh, Commissioner Jose? No report, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Barnett? And no report, Mayor. Commissioner Waldeck? I do have a report, Mayor. Guess what this weekend is, and it's called, it's called Ice Fest. Our downtown management is holding the annual Ice Fest. It's Friday and Saturday, February 9th and 10th. Uh, the only thing that comes that, that's almost as bad as my eyesight is my typing. You should see the way I spelled sculpting. <laughs> Ice sculpting, uh, the demos will be Friday at 5.30 and Saturday from 11 to 3 o'clock. Uh, of course, you're going to be hungry in the morning, so there's a pancake breakfast at First Congregational. That's Saturday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, there's an old-fashioned barn dance at the Two-Way Street Coffee House. Uh, that's Saturday night from uh, Saturday night, 8 p.m. There is a fee of $5 entrance. Uh, the Ice Queen and Princess will be roaming around Saturday from 11 to 1. They suggest you bring your cameras. Uh, I don't know what happens if the Ice Queen melts. Does the Princess take over? I don't know the rules about succession or whether she retires and the Ice Princess becomes the Queen next year. I'll have to check into that one. Uh, they also say that there's a over 40 ice, and I misspelled sculptures again, uh, over 40 ice sculptures on the street. Now, I don't know if that's for folks for, who are over 40 or whether it's the number of 40. But anyway, big ice fest. Uh, if, if Mayor Tully was here, I'm sure he would guarantee perfect weather for it. Somewhere uh, below freezing and above too below, I guess. Uh, you don't want them to melt, but you want to be, you want to be out there and enjoy them. I mean, there's a lot going on. Come on downtown and enjoy it. If you have any, any questions or you want to look in the future, see future events coming up, uh, it's uh, uh, downersdg.org. 
and uh, even got day by day stuff on you know calendars, things that you can do in various businesses in the downtown. So uh, that's all I have there. Well, thank you, Commissioner Walbeck, for that. And I know we can always count on you to give us a very excellent report on what's happening in our downtown in your role as liaison to downtown management. Thank you. Okay, I have no further report. Um, the, last act, the, the last item on our agenda be, before adjournment is called Council Member New Business. And this is a procedure this council follows for individual council members if they wish to present an item for possible future consideration by this council. This lets them formally present it to the entire council. We'll discuss it and decide whether uh, we're going to proceed with the item uh, on some future agenda. Uh, the first item, item 12A, is brought by Commissioner Waldeck. It's been our practice to allow the person who's presented it as new business to explain to us what the petition's about. Commissioner Waldeck. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, let's see, I will not make a motion for it at this time, but I will explain it and, and see if there's any uh, interest in moving ahead. Um, this, is, this is based on, uh, on recent changes to our liquor ordinance. Uh, I could say that all businesses in Downers Grove can show R-rated movies or less. But, and that would include uh, hair salons. Go to get your hair done, you bring one of the kids, uh, in order to keep them busy, you pop a movie in the machine, and they can watch Disney for a while. Uh, you go to a sandwich shop, while they're preparing your sandwiches, sometimes they have screens in, in the uh, in the corner somewhere in there where you can uh, watch sports or movies or soap operas or whatever happens to be on at the time uh, when you pick up your car uh, oftentimes they have a tv uh, you can go in you can sit down what might happen is uh, some the, the previous uh, person while they're waiting for their car doesn't want to see fox news so they turn the channel and all of a sudden there's a movie on uh, and you could sit there and watch watch the movie, R-rated or less. And then maybe uh, there's always the possibility that it could be uh, in violation of a, uh, you know, without going into details, we'll see bare breasts that aren't R-rated, you know, less than R-rated. They could appear on TV. So, uh, but it's all all perfectly legal. But the. The true statement is all businesses can show R-rated movies or less unless you have a liquor license except for a T-class liquor license, which, as a reminder, only applies and can only apply to the Tivoli Theater. Not looking to change anything is uh, at our last meeting. Uh, we made some changes. Uh, I, I call them a, uh, uh, a loosening of standards. Uh, some may argue with that, but regardless, it was a change of standards. And I believe standards should be applied across the board. So, and, and since, it's, uh, since all business can do this and the Tivoli, I think there's no reason why uh, those with a liquor license uh, could also uh, be allowed. Uh, now, since all this appears in the, in the alcohol uh, section of our code, section, our Article 3, uh, from 3.2 of our code, it is, and I quote, it is the policy of the village uh, to limit the purchase, consumption, or possession of alcohol, alcoholic liquor, in order to prevent intoxication, disorderly conduct, trespass, unruly disturbances at public or private assemblies, traffic accidents, similar conduct, which often results from the unlawful or excessive purchase or consumption or possession of alcoholic liquor. That's the policy, that's what we're driving here, and that's what Section 3 is all about. The body, and then we move to 3.3, .3, the body parts and and the real or simulated, mostly sex acts, described in 3.3 .3 of the code, are not only archaic, but summarized in, in a way of describing it through a, uh, some sort of a rating system uh, that comes from Hollywood or somewhere, whoever does that. Uh, not only can everyone show 
these movies intentionally or even accidentally. The liquor holders, liquor license holders can't, not even accidentally. Uh, this is a code that applies to alcohol and, and council is trying to use it for other purposes on the assumption that if you see an R-rated movie or less, it affects your alcohol consumption and makes you uh, just unintended alcohol con consumption consequences. I really don't see that. Not in today's day and age that's really archaic. Standards should apply equally. All license holders have restrictions. Other than the T-Class or Tivoli, uh, they have servers and, and waiting staff that are all adults and trained. If they do not have trained servers or wait staff, they can lose their license. If they over-serve and persons become intoxicated, they could lose their license. If they sell to minors, they can lose their license. If alcohol winds up in the hands of a minor, not through sale, but just winds up in the hands of the minor, they could possibly lose their license. That is the purpose of the council policy in chapter three. Now, if the T class serves minors, for example, they could lose their liquor license, but they still have a business. And they can still sell, uh, show movies and films. But if one of these other license holders should decide to show one of those films, if alcohol in any way, whether it's, it doesn't matter, it, they could lose their license. They, if they lose their license, they are losing either a great part of their business or possibly all of their business. So they're going to have extra care in making sure that they control their alcohol. And if they don't, they can lose their license. They can go out of business. So they have a lot of risk. And that's why I think that they should be treated fairly. Now, I warned council in a, a few weeks ago in our last meeting that if you change the, change the ordinance, if you change the standards, they should be across the board. And if you don't do it across the board, it's being hypocritical. And are we going to be hypocritical or are we going to go through all kinds of verbal gymnastics uh, be hypocritical? So uh, council members, I'm sure, have reviewed the uh, request. And what this involves is changing, uh, removing the Class T license from the, uh, from the last uh, sentence in 3.3 uh, regarding the showing of movies. So that's basically the new business, and I appreciate your consideration. And if we can move ahead, uh, that would be great. Let me ask this a simple clarifying question so we know what it is specifically that's being requested. If the proposed amendment was made that you're requesting, then every liquor license holder would be allowed to show our movies. That's basically, is that basically? Our or less. Our or less. That, that, that's basically the, the is, is that, the primary substance of what of, of, of what the motion of what the request is. Yes, right now okay. they're the only ones that can't. Okay, so I just want to clarify what parts of of, of the ordinance we're talking about. Any members of council interested in proceeding further with this item? And it also includes accidental showing. Right. I think you've made I think you've made an eloquent position for yourself. I don't believe anybody else is interested in proceeding forward with this. You can make a motion if you wish. No. Okay. Okay. That concludes that item. Item 12B of new business. Uh, the applicant, the, the, you know, the commissioners presenting that have asked that that be deferred to the time that we have all of us here. Okay. Anything, anything else from council? The chair invites a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting adjourned.